Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Josh Ellsworth and I'll be your host today and I'm joined by a special guest from Stalls, Ben Robinson. Thanks for coming on today. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, ben is our general manager at Stalls Hotronics, which is our heat press manufacturing division at Stalls. And uh, we have a special episode today and we're excited to welcome Ben on as a guest because we are covering a new heat press innovation that was rolled out uh, back in SGIA just a couple weeks back. And we're going to bring that innovation to you live and preview that and take your questions to make sure you understand the latest out there in heat printing. But before we get to all that, uh, let's give our viewers a little bit of uh, background on uh, your experience with Hotronics and sort of uh, some of the innovations that you've seen along the way. Uh, in your job there? Well, um, I've seen a lot of them and been part of a lot, uh, part of, a lot of them, but uh, one of the things that uh, happened early on in the mid-80s was uh, Stahls invented the first digital heat press, so kind of revolutionized the industry from bimetallic thermostats and wind-up bell timers to digital temperature time and uh, pressure. Uh, some other ones along the way that were milestones that I believe were over center pressure adjustment, cast in tubulars, RTD sensors, uh, auto open presses. Uh, we're talking about threadability. There's just a few along the way that I remember. Yeah, quite a history of innovation at Stalls from, I think, <clears throat> inventing the modern day heat press with digital time and temperature uh, being the start and then just the, the ultimate in accuracy in heat printing and really uh, efficiency and ease of use. I know that you and your team spend a lot of time uh, putting yourselves into our customer shoes and talking to our customers at different trade shows and through the 24-7 uh, tech line. You get a lot of feedback right. as well. Um, so uh, what, walk through the, your history at Hot Tronics. When did you uh, start there? Mm -hmm. Early 90s. Early 90s? Yeah. Okay, so you've been doing heat printing for the better part of 20 years. 25 plus, yeah. 25 plus, okay, excellent. So uh, this factory is just down the street from us here at Stalls TV. So I was um, lucky enough to really cut my teeth in the heat printing world at the young age of, I think, 18, uh, down inside of the Hotronics uh, building and learn the ropes from Ben. So uh, thank you for that. I consider Ben uh, one of my mentors here at Stalls and uh, he showed me the ropes along the way. So it's uh, quite a privilege to have you on today and exciting. So I know there's, uh, viewers watching live here so we have our facebook feed up in front of us and there's viewers on GoToMeeting. Uh, this is live so feel free to type in your questions along the way on the stalls tv morning show and we'll make sure that we take some time for q a uh, as always on the morning show we like to have a look of the week section so this is the section of the show where we share inspiration with you from a fellow apparel decorator so this week's look of the week winner is lauren buster and so this is a really cool look uh, you see the little girl on the side and she's wearing a raglan t-shirt with the image that has been heat printed and then uh, colored in with either a washable marker or permanent marker, it doesn't really matter, it depends on the effect you want. But this is actually cut and weeded from heat transfer vinyl. This product uh, is referenced by Lauren on our stall show and tell on our Facebook page is CAD Cut Premium Plus, so it's extremely soft and you can see she mimicked uh, a coloring book page. Cut it, weeded it, and pressed it. And so uh, you, the ideas start to go through your mind of the opportunities here. This could be great uh, for schools, especially preschools, daycares. Uh, there's really a sales opportunity uh, that can be inspired from this look. Uh, Vacation Bible Schools also comes to mind as a uh, craft project. So lots of uh, different options here. And so if you want to submit to Look of the Week to inspire other apparel decorators, there's three ways to do that. One, email tv at stalls.com. Two, share them on our Facebook page, which is Stall Show and Tell. And third, tag us on Instagram. And yes, I got them in the right order today. It's a good <laughs> Monday morning. Okay, so another thing that uh, we would like to do here on the Stalls TV Morning Show is bring you the latest news uh, from Stalls. And so there was a product uh, that we launched uh, last week on Monday. It was called CAD Cut Reflective 2 and so I'm going to bring uh, a shot of this into the frame. Uh, last week we introduced CAD Cut Silicone 200 to you which is a good silicone based rubbery uh, die block material that we have available from stalls for heat printing for cutting on your vinyl cutter and Reflective 2 is one of my favorite new products that we've launched in some time. Uh, the reason I like it is because it comes in a roll, you can cut it on your vinyl cutter and it doesn't cost you a fortune. So reflective materials typically cost a lot of money to be able to cut, weed, and 
can decorate a shirt with, and they're often difficult to use, uh, very complicated to weed and heat apply, a lot more challenging to work with. But we've worked hard to innovate this latest reflective product to make it easy to use. So with that, I want to roll this footage to show you how CAD Cut Reflective 2 works. CAD Cut Reflective 2 comes in a 20 inch wide roll in one yard, five yard, 10 yard, 25 and 50 yard increments. So there's a variety of options for your business. This product in the 50 yard roll is as low as $1.88 per square foot, which makes it very affordable for customizing apparel. When cutting this particular reflective product, there is no liner to remove. You simply load the roll, adhesive side up like we've done here, and send your image in reverse. Like most reflectives, this reflective does have glass beads in it, so it's very important to use a sharp blade. Always conduct a test cut first to ensure you have accurate settings. Once the cut is complete, we'll remove it from the cutter and start the weeding process. When weeding Reflective 2, you'll notice that the material does have a sticky backing, very low tack, which means if you accidentally peel up something, you'll be able to position it back down. As you're thinking about using this product, there's a lot of different opportunities for reflective logos. In this case, I'm using it for our corporate logo as an alternate color to our base color. And that's typically acceptable with any corporate logo, especially when you're aiming for a special effect with high visibility. Now, when it comes to heat application of this, you'll notice how easy it is to use. And we're going to apply these logos across three different styles of items that would be a great opportunity for promotional products. The backing is tacky, but it does allow for stacking and separating over at the heat press. CAD Cut Reflective 2 applies at a temperature range of 290 degrees to 302 degrees. If you're decorating a synthetic fabric like this polyester performance polo, we recommend the 290 degree application. I'm loading it on a six by 10 platen here on the Hotronics Fusion heat press. I'm gonna do a quick preheat to make sure my pressure is correct. Then I'm going to take one of my small logos, position it into place, and prepare to complete the application. I do want to make sure I have it lined up. What I like to do is typically hold the garment up. Since I'm using the 6x10 platen to get rid of the buttons, I like to hold the buttons up to ensure the logo is running straight. And I also like to pinch top shoulder where the uh, collar meets the shoulder seam and run a vertical line down and make sure that's roughly centered on my logo. That will change slightly depending on the format of your logo, but that gives you a good general rule. 290 degrees single step application of 10 seconds. And this is a hot peel, which I love. And that's completed. Uh, this is an awesome product. Now, this is not a product that's ANSI certified. We have our high-end 3M Scotch Light Reflective that's going to handle that for you. And this is going to be more of an economy-priced reflective, but you'll see it's about half of the price of that product. So if you don't need the certification for like a roadside work crew, uh, this is a great product for that. Now I see the questions coming in. If you have questions about heat presses, now would be the time to ask them because we got the guru of heat printing here with us. And so I'll make sure to ask some of our common questions at the end of the show, but keep your questions coming in about all things heat press related. But we promised you an innovation and a product rollout on today's show. So with that, take it away. Okay, one of the things that we've been working on for quite some time is we know with the popularity of uh, performance garments up and coming, that decorators in general, whether it be DTG, screen printing, sublimation, they all have their drawbacks, including heat printing. Uh, so one of the things we did is we studied the garment, knowing that it takes X amount of temperature to cure the garment when it's being manufactured, and the, and the dye setting and all that type thing. And the biggest problem that people have with performance wear and heat printing is that they get that nasty bruise or the heat press mark associated with it. You've all seen the left chest logo and then it has a square around it. 
So we did a lot of studying and we've invented um, a lower pre uh, heated press attachment that we have that we're demonstrating here that eliminates, not greatly reduces, it eliminates all heat press marks. And basically what it is, is it piggybacks off of our interchangeable platens that we have with all of our presses. You can simply remove your regular platen that you get with your clam press and now you can drop this heated uh, lower attachment down in. Now one of the things that the heated attachment has is an anti-static quick slip cover which is needed to thread the heat thread the uh, shirts onto the heat press. You have to be able to thread a shirt and when I say that the thread shirt, Josh is going to demonstrate here in a little bit how we actually open the shirt up so that you can split the garment. Actually we'll do it right now. But what we do now is we split the garments so that you're only dealing with one substrate. A lot of these threadability um, uh, features we developed to have in all of our press lines of equipment. Another really big benefit of it is, is there's no need to um, do a, a pre-press with it right now because the heat has already knocked the moisture out of the garment. It's laying perfectly flat. This garment is ready to print and it means no more elbow grease to double hit it. It doesn't mean wear your machine out. It means just go ahead, place your garment on there and then go ahead and place your media. In this case, what are we printing, Josh? CAD Cut Premium Plus. Okay, that's great. So basically what he does he aligns that down. He's going to go ahead and lock our standard press down and we'll tell you kind of what's going on and you have to listen quick because it only takes eight seconds. And we're on a medium pressure. Basically what we did is we heated the application from the bottom at a 300 degrees Fahrenheit and that's run through this controller independently and then we also have a top temperature that we were able to decrease to 200 degrees. So instead of having the old 330 degrees on the top and it actually heats from the top down which bruises the shirt, we're bringing the bottom heat up through that would actually uh, agitate the adhesive and push it down into the garment. It flows towards uh, there to give you the best possible print possible. It's going to demonstrate another one here as well. Again, basically what we did is we threaded the garment on there and whether this be a youth garment, whether it be leg and sleeve, whether it be any type of print that you're doing, if you're doing it on performance wear, you want the low temperature on the top and we want to bring the higher temperature from the bottom. The science of this is this. 200 degrees on the top plus 300 on the bottom, 8 seconds, gives you that 275 you need at the adhesive line. Now one of the things that Stahls has, has done a tremendous job, and we credit Ted for this, is always being ahead of the curve when it comes to transfers and uh, adhesives and always chasing or staying ahead I should say never being chasing but he's already got a ton of uh, different applications that apply at the 275 to 260 mark which is inventive in itself. Now all we did is we were able to bring that from the bottom and this combination one-two punch in the industry eliminates heat press marks completely. So we did a soft launch of this down in uh, New Orleans and basically what we did is showed it to select customers that came up uh, and, and, and saw this and they, they were ready to order. Like how many and when? Yeah, the, um, there's a lot of different products that uh, can be compatible with this. So we found that your low temp uh, adhesive products and so for those of you that watch the morning show, you know Premium Plus applies down at 280 degrees. Uh, typically it takes uh, eight seconds um, and it's a warm to a cool peel. On this with the 200 and 300 we're actually hitting that 260 degree melting point for the adhesive by bringing the heat up from the bottom and giving it that application. And uh, by doing that um, you, you basically reach the, what I want to say, the temperature exactly uh, that you need to hit for the adhesive level of the garment. And so what you end up with is you get the nice application, you get the good adhesion, and um, I always like to hit it a second time, especially if you notice any lifting on the corners as you're sure. peeling the backing. And so you hit it for a second time at that same 265 degrees at the meeting point, and then we finish it. And then the, I wanna hold this up so we can see the finished results, uh, because this is a garment that we've um, had challenges with, and you don't see any uh, scorching or bruising of the actual garment. So there's a lot of different uh, challenging garments that are out there. This is a sport tech. It's a very uh, thin uh, sort of stretchy 
uh, fabric. So regardless of the garment, uh, you can load it on here and heat print that uh, with the bottom heat platen. Okay, just a little bit more about the mechanics of, of the actual. We showed you that it basically fits into some of the machines that we've made for the last 20 years. So we want people who already are Hotronics owners to be able to just pull that uh, optional platen out and drop this in so that they can enjoy uh, the benefits of, of heat printing performance. But another thing that we wanted to show you is it has a standalone controller. So it was designed with simplicity in my mind. And what that means is this controller actually activates this heater and we're running at 300 degrees. But when you look on the bottom of it, depending on what you have, today we're using shelves that are metal, but we also sell a scissor cart. We have a magnetic attachment as well as we have a rubber foot attachment. So those of you that have your shop already set up, you can just simply put that on your wooden table. But also we want to let you know that the magnets will hold it to a metal surface in the event that you have the caddy shelves. We also have another attachment that will rig up to the side of this and anybody who owns a Max or a Hotronics clam will be able to place it, index it in this hole and then tighten it up and it becomes part of the press. And the joy of that is we know that the bottom controller controls the bottom platen and then your top original controller still controls your top platen. It's very simple. Now I know that one question that, that I had and I'm not sure if you covered it yet, I'm trying to take it all in, is the um, the power supply to run the top and the bottom heat. Any special configuration needed there? No, the only thing that we're telling everybody is you need to have a dedicated circuit for your lower uh, temperature attachment because it is its own separate heat press. And the lower temperature attachment will draw 15 amps, so there's no way that you could ever plug in the top and the bottom. So we two dedicated circuits, which okay. is a small price to pay to print performance wear flawlessly every okay. time. Okay, and then the, uh, we have some questions coming in. Evelyn asks about the blue and white uh, shirt. That was from Sanmar. It was a sport tech garment from Sanmar. Uh, some of the other questions are price and also availability, I think, is an important. Okay. Colin asks about the price. Okay, so we can answer that. Uh, we soft launched this in New Orleans, got the feedback. It was tremendous, by the way. Had we had them in a box, we would have sold hundreds of them. That's uh, no kidding there. But so our shop, is, as Josh mentioned earlier in the show, is uh, right down the street. We're working diligently around the clock to put these in stock for you guys. And they'll be for sale November 15th, and we'll be able to sell them at 995, which is still under a thousand bucks. Okay, and then just to talk through compatible heat presses, because I think that's an important point, and I actually pulled a separate platen out to show this. So you have this pin registration system that's used on most of the Hotronics heat presses. Correct. We specifically recommend mm -hmm. this for presses where you don't, where you aren't able to move the bottom platen as a safety feature. So the clamshell, the air fusion, the dual Correct. air fusion, uh, in the Max press as well, Correct. the Max and the auto clam would yep. be compatible units. Now, for those that have invested in a Fusion, uh, just know we are working hard. Currently, this is not recommended with the Fusion Press, uh, but we do have Ben coming back here in a few weeks to roll out a brand new innovation that you're going to be excited about for 2018, specific to the Fusion Press Correct. as well. So that's just a little teaser uh, for everybody watching. Let's take some additional questions. I think um, Robin asks, so with this, you have to buy different sizes for like a youth, adult, and children. So any suggestions um, as far as different garment sizes? Right now, it's 16 by 20 only, correct? Yes, we're launching 16 by 20 first, but I'm sure there'll be new uh, inventions to come to take care of any of the other needs. Okay, and then is it possible just to purchase the bottom attachment piece? It absolutely is. It'll be sold separately, but we're also going to work hard to be able to have you order that with your new presses. Uh, so for those of you that don't own presses right now, in the event that you decide to purchase, purchase a Hotronics press, you're going to need to do performance wear, and we strongly recommend that you pick up the lower attachment. Now, one of the things I did want to mention to you, you don't have to use the lower attachment on everything. Okay. So in the event that you're doing the good old standard cotton shirts or a 50-50 blend or a bag or this or that, and it's not performance wear, I recommend you simply disconnect the latch on the bottom, take it out, and put your standard platen back in. And then that way you get two platens for the 
you know, for the different jobs. Good. And I know this is uh, this is proven successful. I know you've tested it on a lot of garments that have been laundered, sort of in our, our pilot testing in order to launch this piece, right. um, primarily on your thin synthetic performance wear fabrics, which are the top offenders for scorching. And I know that additional uh, confirmation of testing is underway for thicker types of performance wear like fleece. It's all just about hitting the recipe right for Correct. the different weight of garments. So today uh, we have an application that's recommended across our low temp products for these thin performance uh, textiles and we're working to uh, dial in more applications for more types of garments, different weights, different types of transfers. Some promising news and this isn't lab certified yet but we had success with glitter flake on performance wear and glitter flake usually takes 300 degrees uh, to apply and I've heard all types of concerns with glitter flake bruising on like track jackets and different things for dance. Uh, this is going to solve that uh, challenge for you. So uh, success uh, in heat printing will require the lower heat platen for performance wear. Correct. Now let's head back over to the table because I do want to take some more questions and speak to just some of the, the other things that we've uh, come out with over the years. Because in the past, uh, here at Stalls TV, we've been educating people just to lower your temperature um, down uh, in order to reduce or eliminate the scorch mark. And that works most of the way. But really what we found is there are some garments that are just too heat sensitive that no matter what you do, especially on the dark colors, they want to mark. And that's really what this innovation was born from. Yeah, one of the nice things about it is it's also a game changer in the way of production. Uh, so in order to, Josh talked about earlier, we had some of the performance garments, uh, you know, that you could lower your temperature, use a flexible application pad, put a pillow in here or there. And it was a lot of, um, a lot of non-efficient ways of doing production. The nice part about this is it completely eliminates it, completely eliminates it on every garment we've tested. And it's a simple slide it on eight seconds and lock it down as you would at normal heat press. Now I've under, I understand you be, you've beta tested this, um, a factory has beta tested this and you have a pretty nice pre-order, right? There's absolutely, we have one of the major sporting, uh, the major sporting league uh, event leaders that have hundreds of presses right now. They are uh, testing this with great success. We've got several of these all over the world and uh, it's definitely the way to go. In our own shop, we have done hundreds of wash testings on some of the most difficult, dry fit, sublimatable garments. And uh, it is definitely a game changer. We're okay. excited. So let's take one last look at the lower heat platen on the auto clam here in its entirety. Do we have a graphic to flash across that people can actually pre-order from, Joe? And right there it is. If you visit um, hottronics.com backslash, you see all the details there, I'm not gonna read it all for you. Uh, jot that down and you can actually um, go ahead and uh, get on a list or pre-order this, but visit the website and get all the latest details on this innovation. The actual launch date when we start delivering <coughs> is uh, sometimes uh, towards the end of November, is that correct? It'll be around November 15th, first come, first serve, and it'll be a stock item for us January 1st. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and take some of your other heat printing questions that are coming across. And uh, one of the questions I see here is, well, it's still relative to the lower heat platen. How do you isolate buttons or zippers using the lower heated platen? So I know this was one of the questions I had uh, when I visited you. And what we found was on some of your seams that are sort of um, smaller in nature, I mean, you wouldn't want to do like a, a quarter or a half inch thick seam, but if you had a, a smaller seam, you can actually print um, right through that as long as your application area isn't butted right up against the seam. Yeah, the attachment itself is not hard metal to metal. It does have a very, um, a very fine uh, 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 thermal conductive pad that's located underneath of the quick slip cover. Yeah, let's and take a look at it while you're talking. What that will allow you to do is go ahead and put those buttons straight on top of it. The density of that pad itself uh, enabled us to print left chest right up to a four button golf shirt. So it has been well thought out. In the event that you still need to emboss up an area, we'll be selling separate pads to where if you have a an area that's just giving you fits because there's so many seams or they're bigger, there's ways around it. Just no different than you used to before. Yeah, kind of like a special print perfect pad where you can buy a smaller component and uh, utilize that. Correct. In this case, however, you want to make sure you don't build on top of that because then you'll lose the heat traveling through. So don't use this with your standard heat printing, uh, print perfect pads or heat printing pillows as that can cause um, some issues. So some other question 
Uh, Patty asks, why can't it be used with the Fusion? So let's give the... <clears throat> okay, so for now we're, we're introducing it into the clams. Uh, the Fusion would be able to use it in the swing fashion. Uh, but the problem with the Fusion is it has a removable lower drawer that shuttles in and out. And because of the electric and the telescoping of moving that from one station to the other, I will say we are not ready to release the technology for the Fusion yet, but stay tuned. Okay. That's a nice way to put it. All right. Can you scroll down through those questions, Joe, and see what else we have? Do we have anything coming in from our folks on GoToMeeting? No, we're good. Okay. So legs and sleeves, I think we've addressed that through the extra inserts. Um, there are some legs and sleeves that you can just lay um, on the lower plat, uh, platen. For instance, um, I just did a job where this would have come, came in, uh, in perfectly because they were uh, performance wear, like spandex leggings from Sophie, and they lay flat, so there wasn't any crazy seam structure. And I was trying to do a print down the leg on my clam. Um, with a heat printing pillow inside, but I was still having some scorching issues, so it would have been perfect to lay on top of there. Obviously, you wouldn't want to print uh, on any thicker seams directly over top, but right. maybe in the future, right? Yep, for sure. Okay, we hear all the feedback, and we always react to the feedback. So one question coming in sort of unrelated to this is, how does the Max compare to the Fusion? I assume this is a question based on uh, investing in a press. Okay, so the MAX is our entry line of equipment that has digital temperature and time. It doesn't have any of the pressure features on it. The uh, clams in general open up like a clamshell and people buy them because they're inexpensive and that they're space saving. So you have to evaluate your shop. If your shop doesn't have a whole lot of room to swing things out because you have a window or a retail aisleway that you don't have a whole lot of room, the Fusion takes up twice the room because you have to swing the whole top away from it. The advantage of the Fusion, it's the most electronically uh, advanced manual press in the world. It's our number one seller. It gives you a whole lot of features with threadability out of the box. It gives you features of you're able to draw, you're able to swing. Um, and it does sell for probably twice the price of the Max, but it is our top of the line. It also comes with a five-year warranty. The Max comes with a standard one-year warranty. So I would evaluate your shop. I would evaluate how many prints you're going to do and the features that you think that you need. Okay, and I know that uh, a nice jump if you're looking at a clamshell model to go from the Max to the Auto Open, um, that's a jump I would recommend because you get a lot more warranty. Uh, right. for your money. You get the auto open feature and you get the digital pressure readout. Which is very, very important. We always say the trinity in heat printing is temperature, temperature time, and pressure. Uh, we give you the controls at your fingertips with any of the Hotronics lines for that. And the auto open feature is very, very nice so that you can multitask and not wear your elbow out as much to have to unlock it every time it opens on its own. Okay, uh, very specific question. Any uh, place for somebody in Arizona to get their machine service locally? Can you just talk a little bit about how Hotronic service works? Okay, so we, uh, we were the first and only and still the only to have 24-7, 365 blue ribbon support. We have over 120 years of technical service on the phone. So basically what happens is you buy one of our press and you're a customer for life. You get free service uh, via telephone uh, in warranty. You can call us. We have outlets that are located all over the West and Ted continues to open outlets and warehouses in each place that we populate where there's stock. We also populate a technician there that's able to uh, help you in your own time zone. So there's an 800 number that you call and we direct you based on zip code uh, where to go in the event that you need service or, or education. So in the event of he wants his press serviced out of Arizona, he'd be able to call the tech line and get connected. He'd be able to call the tech line, and if we weren't able to service it at a level one over the phone, which is 95% of the time, and you required a little deeper in the book than that, then we would connect you with our um, Phoenix area location. Okay, good. And then Steve also uh, saw the note about the guide for pressure adjustments. We haven't uh, published that yet for the smaller platens and how you adjust your pressure back, but I know that's something we've spoken about at length before, so it's something we'll... Uh, look at getting done here in short order. Apologies for that. All right, let's scroll up to the top to see if there's any questions that I missed. I think I covered all the other ones through our conversation. Um, we talked a little bit about printing uh, youth shirts. And then this is a good one to end on because we always have uh, a lot of beginners. And Jack just typed this in um, as we were talking. Uh, what advice would you give for a beginner starting perhaps with their first heat press or just starting in heat printing in general? 
Any advice you'd like to share for somebody just getting into it? <clears throat> I would say that you want to buy the bells and whistles and the tools that you can afford. Uh, it, there's, there's a beginner press out there, but if you have the capital to go to the Hotronics line, uh, it would be much better to do that from the beginning because we hear feedback from customers all the time saying, I started with this and man, I wish I would have bought that Fusion or something like that. It really is about temperature, time and pressure, accuracy and ease of use. But for the advice for the beginner is, aside from the heat press and all that, you have to build your market. And if you have that artwork and you have that idea and you have that clientele and that business, uh, that the machine will follow your lead. So I would say start with the marketplace and then pick out a machine that you can afford. And I, I would add to that, quality matters. The biggest risk to a beginner business as you're delivering your first orders from those clients that you've worked so hard to get is the transfer peeling off For or sure. something not going correctly. And so um, accuracy in a heat press matters and also accuracy from the operator and having the proper technique with how to load your garment. Uh, in order to print it. So I would just say, uh, make sure that you uh, follow Stalls TV, call our 1-800 number and ask questions if you're on your first application. Uh, we have a customer service team that'll walk you through that. And just make sure you pick a quality press and a quality transfer, because now we're talking about building a brand and you wanna build towards uh, repeat orders because the quickest way to out of business is a lack of quality and a lack of uh, word of mouth advertising. Actually, it'll go the opposite way. Stuff starts peeling off and then all of a sudden you have a bigger issue. Correct. it's tough to line up uh, new customers. I will, I will say to add on this, you know, the Stalls TV, there you have a library of videos and, and prior, uh, it, um, you know, additions of, it, you continue to build and follow the market, but there's a lot to be learned. Stalls is, in general, the entire group is about education. Uh, we, we want you to be successful because it makes us successful. So if you fish around long enough, a lot of your questions will be answered just watching the videos. Good. So. We're excited about that innovation. For those of you that were on the cutting edge uh, that, that saw this at SGIA, we apologize, it was repeat, but hopefully we gave you a lot more info on how to actually uh, use the uh, attachment, the lower attachment, and go through uh, the specifics on what it's compatible with and how to use it. I know for the majority of our viewers, uh, this is brand new information and it's um, something that solves a major challenge. So it, in the innovation timeline of Hotronics, I know it's always been driven about solving customer challenges and building towards the future of heat printing. What are people going to want to do? I always say when you're shopping for your first heat press, not only do you look at accuracy from a time, temperature, and pressure, but you look at versatility. And I will say the reason that I can confidently recommend any Stalls press is because it's the most versatile in the industry. If you go in with a basic clamshell press that you buy from anywhere and you throw that on your counter and you start printing stuff, you're going to be able to offer basic flat stuff. When you invest in threadability in a Hotronics heat press with interchangeable platens, now all of a sudden I open up the gamut as far as what I can sell and what I can print. And I think that's one of the, the most overlooked things is what can you actually make with the press? It's the Swiss Army knife of heat printing. Correct, and then that coupled with Stalls being the single source supplier and all that it does, manufacturing everything from the ground up, from the heat press is just one aspect of it. Uh, you know, there are, we have our own laboratories and our own adhesives and chemists and so the right hand knows what the left hand does and will never leave you hanging when it comes to how to apply that. We know the garment, we know the application, we know the machine. Excellent. All right. We want to thank you all for attending live on the Stalls TV Morning Show. If you continue to have questions or if we didn't get to yours, uh, we will. Make sure you keep those coming in on the Facebook feed and we'll check back and make sure we give you responses. As always, thanks for watching and thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. All right, have a great week.